Well, good morning. Wendy Wright? Yes. I'm Richard Dawkins. Very, very nice kind of you to do this interview. Yes. Where should we go then? Uh, well, how's this? Okay. Concerned Women of America. Concerned I've looked up, um, for, America. for America, I do beg <laughs> your pardon. I've looked up some of the things you're concerned about, and one of them is something I'm very concerned about too, which is, which is Darwin and evolution. But why are you concerned about evolution? Yes, well, <laughs> what a person believes about how human beings were created shapes what they believe about human beings. That if we believe that human beings were created out of love, that is, by a loving creator, and uh, has given each one of us not only a material body, but a spirit and a soul, we that are more likely to treat other people with respect and dignity. Yes, but you have to contend with facts, don't you? And, I mean, if evolution is a scientific fact, you might as well be concerned about gravity or the Milky Way, mightn't yes. you? Yes. Well, uh, there's been an effort within the scientific community to censor out information uh, against evolution that proves that evolution may not be as many scientists believe. Uh, there have been uh, many times in which um, evidence that was brought forward to, claim, to uh, bolster the idea of evolution turned out to be fraudulent. What's so an what, of so that? what we um, argue for is to teach the controversy. Don't censor out the facts that go against evolution, uh, such as the famous uh, pig's tooth, uh, the, the tooth that was claimed to be a, a, an example of a, uh, a prehistoric man and it turned out to just be the tooth of a pig. There are uh, numerous examples like that. So teach the controversy rather than try and censor out the information that shows yes. that evolution you know, is, is questionable. Seriously, there isn't a controversy. There may be a controversy uh, within evolution about certain details, but the, the fact of evolution is, is uncontroversial. I mean, whether you like it or not, we're cousins of chimpanzees, we're slightly more distant cousins of monkeys, etc. I mean, pig's teeth are really irrelevant. Of course you can dig up mistakes and, and, and mm. even outright fraud. I mean, the Piltdown hoax was an outright fraud. But yes. that, that was never used as evidence for evolution. It was just a, a particular case of somebody in the 1920s who, who fraudulently made up a fossil. There's no evidence of evolution from one species to another. There's microevolution within a species, but not going from one species to another. Oh, really? And actually, yeah. you're, you're, the way you have framed this and mm. your very closed-mindedness mm -hmm. uh, really is a very good example of the kind of uh, censorship we see within the scientific yes. community yes. that won't even allow discussion about the controversy that says uh, that we can't even discuss uh, any evidence that might show that evolution is questionable. Right. Where, where did you study science? Well, see, that's the point. Uh, scientists are now claiming that they're the only ones that can speak on this issue. And yet, when people who look at the evidence uh, go to the Smithsonian uh, Museum on Natural History, and when we look for where's the evidence to show evolution from one species to another, all we find are drawings, illustrations. There aren't the uh, actual material evidence showing it. So while there are attempts to say that only scientists can speak on this, what we have are scientists that are then creating a, um, an isolated uh, community and saying that we're the ones, uh, almost like a, it's almost like a religion in which only scientists are allowed to speak and teach on it and to teach everyone else. And everyone else must believe okay. what the scientists, what particular scientists say. But the scientists who question evolution are being censored out, are being blackballed out of the scientific community but and not, and being told that the rest of the world cannot listen to them. Yeah. Um, I mean, the evidence is actually rather substantial. It's, it's not just fossils, you know. I mean, it's DNA. Presumably, you, you're not concerned about DNA. You accept the existence of DNA. Do you? I think DNA helps to prove that each person is an individual created yes. uh, and uh, as distinct from one another. If you look at the DNA of all animals and all plants, what you find is a beautifully arranged hierarchy. You find that our DNA is close to chimpanzees, slightly more distant from monkeys, slightly more distant still from rats, slightly more distant still from lizards. The whole thing falls into a beautiful hierarchical pattern, just like a family tree. It is a family tree. How would you explain that? And where is the evidence? Well, the evidence is in no, the no, DNA. Excuse me. 
Where is the evidence of um, evolution from one species to another species? the macro evolution. Well, it's in the DNA. It's in the DNA, it's in the geographical distribution What you're of talking species. about are commonalities, but again, where's the material evidence of, go, of uh, evolution from one species to another species? Well, we obviously have a different conception of what evidence is. Um, scientists accept that as evidence. It's overwhelming, massive evidence. But let me come on to something else. It sounds to me as though you've got a, some kind of another agenda. Is it perhaps that your hostility to evolution, which by the way is not shared by bishops and archbishops and people like that, your hostility to evolution perhaps stems from something emotional, like, I mean, <laughs> is, it, is it that you feel that, that evolution, I mean, I've heard people say, for example, tell me I'm related to a monkey, uh, you know, I'm not related to a monkey. Tell people they're related to monkeys and they'll behave like monkeys. Tell people they're related to pond slime and they'll, they'll behave like pond slime. Is, is, is part of that the hidden agenda behind your rejection of science? There's no hostility and there's no hidden agenda. We've been very upfront with what it is we believe. Mm -hmm. And the ad hominem attacks that um, people who are in favor of evolution use against people who don't buy into that, I think shows the lack of confidence uh, uh, in the evidence. Um, if evolution had so much evidence behind it, then those in favor of evolution would not have to be reduced to ad hominem attacks against those who say, show us the evidence, show us what's lacking. Well. I, do, I think I dispute ad hominem, but I think you could understand a certain annoyance. It's a little bit as though a teacher of classics. I'm talking about education now in, in schools and universities. Imagine that a teacher of Latin had to, or to, a teacher of Roman history, had to contend with people coming along and saying, the Romans never existed, uh, the Latin language is a Victorian invention designed to, um, you know. To and, I, and I think that's a perfect example of the hostility that those who favor evolution have toward those who don't buy into the idea, who say, show us the evidence, and yet those in favor of evolution well, can't show us the evidence that we're I'm, looking I'm for. I'm sorry, but we can show you the evidence. All you need to do is read an elementary textbook of biology. It's all there. Well, uh, inter that's interesting you should bring out the textbooks on biology. We still have textbooks today. Yeah, I know you're going to talk show... about paper moths and you're going to talk about Haeckel's embryos. No, no. Uh, in fact, what I was going to talk about is the, what they claim to be the evolution of a fetus in the womb yes, based on Haeckel's hand embryos. drawings, yeah. which have been proven to be false, and yet they continue to be published in sci scientific textbooks. Heckel's embryos are just one little thing. It's a Victorian thing. Plenty of people made mistakes in And Victorian. yet continues to be published in today's textbooks. Well, no longer, actually. But, but I don't think it's really fair, is it, to pick on particular Victorian mistakes. It is a Victorian mistake. Oh, I mean, but it was carried over into the 20th date? century. Yes, and that was a mistake, and, and that's been corrected. But look at the massive evidence that there is today. I can't help feeling that there's some sort of hidden agenda. Maybe I was wrong to say it was a thing about uh, tell people that they're descended from monkeys and they'll behave like monkeys. Is it something else? I mean, is there some other worry that you if have? If you're looking, you're looking for a so-called agenda, I'll tell you what it is. We believe that human beings should be treated with respect and dignity. Yes. And the reason we well, believe so that, I, the reason we believe that is because um, we can see that God created each one of us. And what we find is that philosophies that are built on evolution oftentimes lead to horrendic, horrific abuses against human beings. And you can see why, because it's drawn on a foundation that says human beings are just material and they should be judged according to their, their utilitarian use. What thing can they provide yeah. for society? Okay. We don't believe that. Yes, okay. We believe that each human being, whether they can supply something to society or not, if they are disabled, if they are young, that they should be treated with the same amount of respect as you and I should be treated. Yes, I mean, I, I, I accept all that, and I, and I agree with that. I mean, I also think humans should be treated with respect. But, but what we have here is an agenda. It's that you want humans to be treated with respect, and therefore, if the scientific facts go against what your perception is, then you're going to distort the scientific facts. Now, why don't you instead accept the scientific facts and say, but we still want to treat humans with respect. Let's look at evolution and let's see that we can indeed hmm. treat humans with because respect what I go back within to, the evolution framework. What I go back to is the evolutionists are still lacking the science to back it up. But in, instead, what happens is science that doesn't bolster the case for evolution gets censored out, such as there is no evidence of evolution from going from one species
species to another species. If that, if evolution had occurred, then surely, whether it's going from birds to mammals or or even beyond that, surely there'd be at least one There's a evidence. Massive amount of evidence. I'm sorry, but. <laughs>